going to be talking you through a little bit about um, just uh, studying in the UK, the different sorts of experiences that you'll be having with your academics, with your um, extracurriculars. Um, and then I've also got um, a, a current student with us, uh, Mariam, who will be um, sharing her own experience um, as an international student coming to the UK, um, her experience um, with settling in, um, her um, extracurriculars, um, and then giving you plenty of time um, at the end to answer um, any questions um, as well. So please do ask away um, during the session or at the end. Um, this will give you five, 10 minutes um, for any questions towards Towards the end. Uh, my name is Siobhan Ralph and um, I work as part of the undergraduate um, admissions team and like I said I'm joined by Mariam who is an inter who is a current student um, ambassador um, and is also doing um, her degree in social policy um, as well and uh, she will be um, talking to you a bit more towards the end and like I said any questions please do let us know um, and we'll be getting to those um, as we go through. So like I said, I'm just going to run you through um, just um, some quick bits about the academic life at university, actually living at university as well, um, and then also your extracurriculars too. So first things first, um, of course, is how you'll be studying um, and how you'll be learning and how this may differ from your current schooling. So at university, um, you can expect to be learning in a variety of um, different ways. And um, this does um, mix up slightly what you may have been doing at school. So at university, it's much more based on an independent sort, sort of study um, at school. Of course, you know, you do have a lot of guidance and, um, you know, if you miss an essay or miss an exam and um, you may be chased up. But at university is much more about you being an independent learner. And of course, that support and guidance is there, but we do really expect you to take it into your own hands um, as well. Now, depending on your degree, um, you'll have a um, different amount of contact hours. So contact hours are all those things um, that you spend um, in lectures or seminars or just with an academic or with a tutor. For a more science based degree, you could expect to be in your um, in your classes, perhaps around the 20 hour mark per week for maybe more of a social science degree. Um, Mariam, correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe sort of more around the 12 to 15 hours um, per week in lectures and seminars, depending on the year. Um, I, I was a history student um, and I had about 10 to 12 hours uh, per, per year. And um, outside of that, it was a lot more of doing my own research, doing my own essays um, and all the things like that um, as well. So it does depend on what you'll be studying. Um, so do keep that in mind. Now, in terms of how you'll be learning, like I said, it is a bit of a mixture. Um, so you'll be having uh, your lectures, which are kind of your um, core classes. In your lectures, you'll be um, learning the basics of of a subject um, and then and, and then after that you'll have um, some time to do some reading some time to do uh, maybe a, a question sheet or to um, put together a small presentation and then you'll be going into your seminars and your workshops um, and you'll be having more of a discussion based um, session here so a big thing um, at, at a university is that um, you'll be having a lot of discussions um, and so do be prepared to talk if you're doing more of a science based degree, then you can also expect to have some practical sessions in there as well. So lab based sessions, this could be in a design lab, in a computer lab, in your um, traditional science lab um, as well. Um, but you can find all these things out um, on different university course pages. You can typically find out how you'll be taught um, and how much time you'll be spending in class during the year. And that is the same for the way that you'll be um, assessed as well. Now, different um, courses will be assessed in different ways. Of course, you'll have your exams, but you also have your essays. You may have some lab reports. You'll probably have some presentations in there um, as well. Um, again, if it's a more science-based um, degree, then you could expect to have maybe a few more exams. If it's more of a library-based degree, then maybe a few more essays. Um, but again, you can find all this out um, on, the, on the university um, uh, websites um, and do have a think about um, how you would like to learn. Now, sticking in the academic sen, um, a big part um, and a quite a popular option now in coming to university um, is the opportunity to do a work placement or a study abroad year. Um, across the UK, it is now a super pop popular option um, and most universities do offer it um, within their degrees. At Bath, for example, we do offer it for all of our degrees. So if you were thinking about getting some work experience during your um, time here with us, then that is um, possible. If you wanted to do something a bit more short term, then you can also do things like summer internships um, as well. So there's plenty of opportunities um, to get a bit, bit, bit of work experience. Um, and it's just a good way to network and um, to show that you are aware of the sector and also just to try out um, the, the, the job that you think that you might like to do. Like I said, it is very, very popular. So currently at, at Bath, um, just under 70% of our students do do some sort of work placement or a study abroad year. Um, and if you did want to to a study abroad, 
then that is an option there for you um, as well. And again, it's complete, completely optional, but it is a popular um, option, especially for those students who are focusing more on international degrees or um, international studies um, or um, language degrees. And again, it's just a really good way to um, show that you can sort of work in a new culture. It looks really good for future um, in employers. And overall, it's just a really great work and um, opportunity for you to experience. Uh, so when you are doing your research for your UK universities, do make sure that you are checking out these different um, experiences. Do think about what you might like to do during your studies. You don't normally have to decide straight away. Quite often you can um, choose this once you actually get to university. But again, do make sure that you're aware of your choices um, and what you might like to do um, and what you think that you'll enjoy doing uh, as well. <clears throat> okay, I will move on then a little bit more into the actual um, living at university then and perhaps a bit more about your uh, living course. So you can see what you can expect, um, sort of the, the cost of living um, and, and how you'll be living whilst you're in the UK. So your two main things to really think about um, when you're making your decisions and when you're coming to the UK is if you want to live in a city or a campus university. Um, now, as they sound, a city university is one that is based in a city. Um, it may be all, all together, but in a city centre or, um, for example, a lot of London based uh, universities um, have one hub and then they are quite scattered around the rest of the city too. Um, and again, you may like that. You may quite like the idea of being um, immersed in a big city. Um, but if that doesn't sound like um, the thing for you, then you do also have campus universities too um, which we are at Bath we are a campus university um, and that is where everything is all in one place um, and it's kind of like living in a little student town um, for for the year. Now no two cities and no two campuses are the same so do make sure that you are doing your research um, and if you can visit I know it's quite hard to do um, but if you can visit do but also do check out um, different virtual tours of the campus and, and of the city um, and just um, be aware of where that particular place is um, the campus may look great but it may be completely in, in the middle of nowhere um, so again just make sure that you um, are aware and doing your research. Now, like I said, both have their pros and cons. You know, the great thing about living on a campus university is that everything there is there for students and you're surrounded by, by your peers. Um, but you may find that it's a bit quieter um, and, you know, it, it can be safer too. But if you want kind of that bit more of a busy vibe, um, then you may decide to live down in the city. Uh, instead, you'll be a bit more immersed um, in the community, um, but you may find that you need to travel around um, a bit more, which of course you may find a bit overwhelming as a new student. Um, so again, just, just have a think um, and think about what is the best thing for you um, and do take advantage of all your resources um, as well. Now just to give you an example of what a campus may look like, um, so this is our campus here at Bath and like I said everything that you have is based all on the one site, um, so all of our um, um, all of our teaching facilities, our um, housing, our sports um, facilities, all of that is all in one place, um, but then in the top right there you can just see the main city which is about 15-20 20 minutes away, um, so you have that, that option to explore there um, as well, and again do just make sure that you check out the links um, to the rest of the country too, so we're quite close to Bristol, um, and we're around an hour and 20 minutes away from London so it has some good links to the rest of the country um, but you also have a really good hub um, where you are as well. Now a big thing about university is of course the um, cost of living um, and sort of the main things that you're wanting to be thinking about is your budget, what is an affordable budget for you um, and different cities across the UK um, have different costs of living. Um, so if, for example um, in the south is a bit more expensive than in the north um, so again do just have a think about your budget um, about your housing budget um, as well. Have a look into things like scholarships, uh, some universities will offer tuition fee reductions or um, housing um, bursaries or even cash bursaries um, as well so do make sure that you are checking out each university and what financial aid that, that and they can offer but the average cost of living like I said does depend on the particular university at Bath it is around £10,000 per year um, for sort of everything really um, so that is the average of what um, students are paying in rent and bills and food but also in their extracurriculars um, in their um, social time and um, if they're traveling for example that is sort of the average cost cost of living um, so again do just make sure that you are doing your research and you are um, aware of the different price points across the UK um, and, they, and they are also um, aware of what you can be doing to subsidize this um, as well. 
a big thing of course is a part-time work lots of students will work part-time whilst at a university Mariam is currently working uh, right right now by doing talks and tours um, as a student um, and ambassador um, but of course you can also work in the local community work in retail um, you know do, do, do some volunteering if um, you know you weren't too worried about the money side of things um, so there's different things that, that um, you can be doing um, and again there are tons of universities and um, services to support you in that um, as well. So speaking of uh, student support, uh, like I said, there are um, there are um, different um, options in terms of the careers um, service. They can help you with sort of more long term um, options, but also more short term if you wanted to find a part time job or find some internships. And then the career service is there for you um, as well. But in a more um, general vibe, um, they can also help you with your general well being, your mental health, um, and also in your department. Um, there's also help with your um, personal tutor and your peer mentor, providing some more um, academic support to you as well and all these services are there for you and um, as a student and um, you just need to um, ask if you need any extra help and then specifically for international students uh, when you first um, arrive um, you'll be arriving during welcome week or as you may hear, um, um, hear it be called a uh, freshers week um, and this is when um, you'll be settling into the university you'll be moving into your um, housing and during welcome week um, most universities will have a um, specific program of activities specifically for, in, for international students these can be things like networking having a campus tour having a city tour um, you know finding out how to open up a UK bank, bank account if you haven't already done that getting a national insurance number if you did want to find some part-time work um, but across the rest of the time here as well we also do have um, specific services such as our visa and immigration service um, so if you have any concerns there and they can help you with all of that um, if you want to stay in the UK um, after you finish university to work then again they can, can guide you on the process there um, and then we also have um, a number of um, student services that are specifically for it for um, international students, um, such as the International Students Association, um, who do sort of provide help and support um, and um, general guidance. They can point you in the right direction if you need any extra help, um, but they also do um, oversee a lot of the work being done by our um, international student societies too, um, which I'll touch upon in just a second. <coughs> And then just to finish up with maybe a bit more of the fun side of things. So your, your um, extracurriculars or your non-academic um, um, opportunities, of course, a big thing will be settling in and meeting new, new people. Now for everyone, it is a very daunting um, experience, but of course, if you are coming to the UK for a first time, you know, move, move, moving countries, moving away from, from your family, um, it can be an even more um, daunting um, experience. Uh, but the thing to bear in mind is that everyone who is coming to university is also looking to make new friends and meet new people um, and they just want to do that um, as soon as possible so you may find your first sort of term or you know your first few weeks a bit um, overwhelming but um you know the key thing to bear in mind is just to integrate yourself and open yourself up to new um, opportunities as much as possible um you'll be meeting people on your course in your housing in different clubs and societies if you go to different welcome week or freshers events um as well like i said you'll be meeting people in your you know in your year but also in their second and third year too um and university is just a very very open space um to meet new people to make new friends regardless of their age or background or anything like like that um, it's just a really great time to meet be meeting uh, new 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 people um, and you'll continue to do so um, as you go through your university journey um, as well and then just the last thing for me then um, a really key part of this is joining clubs and societies this is probably the most popular thing um, to be doing outside of your classes um, and again it's just a great a way to meet new people you'll be learning some new skills you'll get some new um, experiences and of course it can help you just to settle in a bit more into the university so if you want to join a sports club then you can do so you don't need to be sort of the biggest sports person um, in the world you can play casually and um, you can just go go along for a few uh, tryout sessions uh, but you can also join uh, societies based around food drink arts culture and um, religion all different kinds of things like that uh, for example we do have BAMSA here at Bath which is for Malaysian and Singaporean students um, and, and they meet up sort of um, during the week they um, um, celebrate special events and and um, and uh, holidays together um, and overall it's just about finding your home community whilst being part of the larger Bath community um, as well so that was just to give you a bit of an overview of the different um, experiences um, and the different services here at a university. But I'm going to pass over to Mariam now to actually give you her um, experience. Um, and again, if you have any questions, just let us know. Okay, Mariam, over to you. Hello. So as Siobhan um, said, I'm Mariam and I study um, social policy at the University of Bath. I'm 
currently a third year student. Um, and I'm from Pakistan and Malta. So when I was coming into, like when I was choosing universities, Bath really looked great to me because I saw that my course, social policy, was ranked second in the UK at Bath because Bath tends to have quite like high rankings, um, like sits quite high on all the rankings. Um, and I was like, okay, if I want to study, because I'm quite serious about this, if I want to study um, social policy, I want to apply to like the universities that have like experts in the field and have a lot of practical sessions as well. So that's one of the reasons that I chose Bath. Um, and then in the more fun side, I chose Bath because it offers so many extracurriculars. I, in my first year, I tried out everything. I went to Mahjong, I went to Kickboxing Society, I went to Dance Society, I went to ISOC, I went to basically anything that was on because people are super friendly and I've never done kickboxing or dance or any of these things, but I just went into the club and everyone was so welcoming and so nice and I think that's one of the best things that I found at Bath because there's so many sports and there's so much, so many levels of those sports as well. So you can play recreationally or you can play competitively. You can do like um, teams. There's like several teams. So you can either play in the teams or you can play just for fun. And they're still going on, like even during COVID, during the day sometimes they have like badminton and anyone can show up and play so it's always really good if you have a really busy day and then you want to take a little bit of a break um so actually I really like the mix I like the work-life balance at Bath um and you can see that like I used to watch videos read the blogs um on the Bath website and people all often said the same thing so I was like okay this seems like the right place for me um and my experience of coming to the UK was really smooth. So I arrived at the airport and Bath offers the coach services. So I arrived at Heathrow Airport and then um, the university sent a coach and many, many people from international students arrived. We got like a welcome pack and the coach took us straight to the campus. So we didn't have to, we didn't even have to worry about traveling or anything. And that, that service is on for every holiday I think or was at the time so every holiday you can also get a coach and go to the airport um, so you don't have to worry about that um, I also found Bath to be super super safe and since it's kind of smaller now I'm in my third year I kind of know my way around really well and it's very homely um, like if you go if you I've lived on on campus and out of off campus and I think the experience living off campus is not that much different because it's still really comfortable. It's still really easy to get around and the buses are very frequent. So I don't think it's a big deal because I think in first year you can choose um, on campus accommodation or I think there's a few off campus accommodations as well. Um, but anyway, like the experience of me coming to Bath, in the UK was super smooth. I really didn't find it as daunting as I was thinking it was going to be um I think if I were to go if I if I were to just go to a London uni my first time being in the UK I can see that being a bit more overwhelming but since Bath was um a campus university I feel like first year was just like living on campus getting to know the place and second year you get to move out and you get to know the city and it's just very homey I don't think it has a scary vibe if that makes sense but yeah that's my little speech. <laughs> Amazing, thank you. Um, and like I said, guys, any questions for myself or Mariam, please do let us know. Um, but I wonder before we sort of get started on that, um, Mariam, if you had to offer kind of a big piece of advice, your top tip maybe for um, preparing to come to the UK um, and actually, you know, during the settling in period, what what would you say that your, your top, top tip is? I think, well, there's different top tips for so, yeah. social <laughs> aspects. <laughs> For like if you want to if you're feeling afraid of like making friends and you're a bit nervous I think what I did was really helpful I kind of just even though I was a bit nervous I was like okay let me just go to all these societies let me go there was international student events as well where I just went in and networked and just got to know people even if you don't become best friends with them when you're walking on campus you recognize people and that's quite comforting I think for your social 
like if you want to feel comfortable and feel like a part of a community, just going to these different events is so helpful, especially in your first few weeks. Definitely, yeah. And then in terms of actually when you were like preparing to come over, what kind of, um, in, you know, when you were making the preparations or sort of doing your research, is there anything that you think that you, that you should have done or that you wish you had done or something that you think went really, really well for you? Um, I think that I had like, I'm a list person. So I made lists for everything. So things that I thought I would need. I watched lots of videos. I read blogs about um, tips on what to bring to uni. Um, and I think I'm just going to, I think just stay minimal with that because a lot of people tell you to bring a billion things, but you don't actually need that many things. Like you can live quite a minimalistic life at uni. It's not as like, you don't need to buy that like random thing that you know you have at home but you probably won't use um but making lists and sort of I think there was also Ikea trips and things like that that Bath offered so if you obviously if you're traveling I don't think you can bring as many things from home just apply to these not apply um just register to go with the uni to Ikea um the supermarkets I also think another thing that really helped me, I'd made a Tesco order the day, um, a few days before I arrived. So online, you can order groceries and all these things, and they will just arrive whenever, like if you book a slot, it'll arrive that evening. Um, and then you don't have to go out for groceries. But we also have a supermarket at uni. So if you have any emergencies, you can always go to Fresh. Definitely. Yeah, I think I'd agree that getting the basics out of the way so your food is you know the sort of the best thing to get sorted on your first day and um, just make sure that you're all, all, all prepared for that um but thank you Mariam so and um, we do have I think just a couple more uh, minutes now so if you guys do have any questions and please do pop them into the chat um I'm also available tomorrow um as well I'm at the fair so if you wanted to book um an appointment to talk a bit more about your subject then please do um and if you wanted to keep in touch with us you can scan that QR code on your screen there um but one question has come through for you Mariam and which was how old were you when you first arrived in the UK uh, were you 18 or Yes, I was eight. I was eighteen. I had just turned eighteen. Um, but some people are seventeen, and there is like a whole process for that as well. So it's no big deal. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm trying to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 is right. Um, as I say, you know, the majority of our students are um, eighteen when they arrive. Um, but if you are and um, to join when you are seventeen, then that is possible. But as Marion said, there is just a bit a bit more um of a process um around that. But again, any questions around that, um, please let us know. Um, I'll give it one more minute, see if any more questions come through. But like I said, if not, um, you do have another session in five minutes, I think. Um, but also feel free to book a slot with me um, and we can have a bit more of a chat. Um, so yeah, thanks very much. I hope you found the session useful and any um other queries, uh, please do feel free to get in touch. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Miss Ralph and Mariam for the sharing. Um, yep, you guys can actually head to who below to also chat with um, Miss Ralph on uh, if you have any queries, or you also can go to to the lounge to um, look for our UK um uh reps to uh if you have any queries as well. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank, Thank you. Bye. You. Have a good day, too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Everyone. Bye. Bye.